Good afternoon, Day of Pentecost, Full Gospel Church. It is so good to see everyone this afternoon, for this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I just want to share with you that um, uh, the scripture that I'm going to read uh, to you today is probably a very familiar one that um, is sometimes read usually around um, Easter time or shall we say resurrection time um, or uh, sometimes it's read at Christmas but I feel that it's appropriate to read today specifically because of the Bible study that we had on Wednesday, which um, also um, prompted my sermon for today. You see, um, and I could not shake that from my mind. And so I was really, I really kind of, uh, that kind of just really got into my spirit. So I, I'm going to read this scripture and then I'll come back to you because I had several scriptures that um, we're going to touch on today. And I just didn't want to add any more, but so I'm going to read this one beforehand uh, from Isaiah chapter 53. Because even though this is Old Testament, it speaks of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53 reads, Who shall have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him, as a, t a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised <clears throat> and rejected of men. <clears throat> a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he hath borne our griefs and carried away our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I've read these six verses coming from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah because that speaks of Jesus almost a thousand years before the crucifixion and the resurrection in the Old Testament. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord once again. As I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I've got several scriptures to share with you uh, this afternoon. Um, that Bible study, and by the way, I am drinking ginger ale. <clears throat> Left my coffee cup over there today. I've got several scriptures I want to share with you today. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, Bible study, when we had our discussion, it really struck a nerve when we were talking and studying about Zephaniah. And the statement came up as we were looking at some of the things that directly tied into the New Testament and a picture of some of the things that would take place in Revelations. And there was a statement that was made, and I don't remember exactly who made it, but it came out and was talking about... Uh, how someone said that um, someone that someone knew that felt that the Old Testament, which is most of our Bible, has no bearing on the church. Now I'm going to hold up my Bible because I want you to see something. All right. What you're looking at right here is the Old Testament. Now, when I studied for my ordination, one of the questions that they asked me when I was ordained in the Baptist church, how many books are in the Holy Bible? There are 66 books in the entire Bible. There are 39 in the Old, 27 in the New. 27 in the New. And if you look at the Old Testament in relation to the New Testament, it'll bring you to my topic for my message today, the foundation of our salvation. Now, let me know. Uh, hallelujah! Lisa, can you show my first picture, the, fi the picture of the, bu the building under construction? Thank you, Jesus! If it can come up there. Now I want you to look at that picture. Because this is the vision that God gave me. While we were in Bible study. Now, 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 I, I, I'm going to something. I know I haven't read my scriptures yet, but I have to put that up there. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Woo! Jesus. Hey, Lord. Because while we were in Bible study, the Lord began to speak to me. Because I know somebody that somebody knew that didn't want to be a part of the church that y'all were attending then because they didn't believe that the Old Testament had any relevance for the church today. How dare anybody say that statement? Woo! Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, look at that picture real good. Now, there's somebody here with us today that started driving buses in 1973, May 17th, the same day I did, and that was right around the time that Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority was digging 
tunnels all over downtown Washington doing something called cut and cover, had all the streets dug up, digging deep down in Washington, D.C., and then covering up the streets. And at the same time, they were building, tearing down buildings, and they were putting up places like that where they were building buildings along the same places where they were also digging subway tunnels. And you see along the sides there where you have those, those wooden things, and, uh, the pilings uh, with metal strips down there. And then they would brace that so that the street wouldn't cave in. Mm -hmm. And the deep hole where they were putting the foundation for the building. Now, I had to paint that picture. So let's leave that picture up there a while because I want this to, hey, sink in as we talk about the foundation for our salvation. Now I'm going back to the first piece of digging that was done for our salvation. I'm going to read the very first piece. And then I'm going to take it from there and I'm going to read some from the New Testament. I'm just going to read one. I could dig the whole foundation with that, from that, just from that one, but I'm just going to read that first piece right now. There's a whole lot of other verses that we could go into. But this first verse coming from Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 15. I want you to think about this. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's the first dig that was done for the foundation for our redemption. That's the first dig. Now, I'm going to skip over to the New Testament for some other evidence. Oh, I'm already, I've got chills running up and down my spine. John, chapter 17, verse 24. And this is Jesus praying. Now, the first one was Jesus talking to the serpent and telling him the prophetic word about what the seed of woman was going to do to the head of of the serpent who is Satan. Now this verse now is Jesus praying. Father, this is John chapter 17 verse 24. Father, I will pray that they also whom thou gavest, thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. You see, before the foundation was dug, there's got to be a plan. You see, before you dig anything, before you say you're going to do something, you've got to have a blueprint. You've got to, ah, you got to have a plan. Y'all ready for the next verse? Woo! Lord, I should have brought my church fan with me. Done got warm already. Hey, glory. Mm. Let's go to Ephesians. I told you I had some verses for you. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Lord, I had no 
I dare you go work it like this. Hey! Mm, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before the foundation. Before the foundation. It was in the plan, the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Before the foundation. Can I go to the next verse now? I haven't even gotten into the message. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling getting through the scripture here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. I'll wait till you get there if you're not there yet, but you're probably already there because we're in Ephesians. And then we got one in Hebrews. Ooh, that's going to be the longest one. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief Cornerstone. <laughs> Woo! Mm -hmm. The foundation. And then the chief cornerstone is Jesus. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling it right now. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going down to verse 8, verse 9, and verse 10. Woo, Jesus. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And when he went out, not knowing whether he went, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let that sink in a minute. Is, is, is my first picture up there? Ooh. You see that foundation? Now, when we were in Bible study, the picture that I got as we were studying, and when I heard that phrase that this person said, 
There was no need for the Old Testament. It was irrelevant because we now had Christ. So the, new, the Old Testament was irrelevant because we now had the New Testament. I thought about something because the Lord gave me a picture of the cross. And I'm going to show you something. Now, I'm holding my pen that I had in my pocket. And the reason that this pen is standing in my hand is because my fingers act as a foundation mm -hmm. for that to stand. Mm -hmm. Now just imagine, just imagine that this pen is the cross. Now, if they just took the cross for Jesus to be crucified on and just sat it on top of the ground, hmm. let me show you that again. Old Testament. This is the cross. If there was no Old Testament foundation, Let that sink in for a minute. So, that was the picture that I got. And so the Lord just kept showing me that and showing me that and showing me that. And I done, I done skipped all over everything that I had down here. So I don't know where I'm going, how I'm going to bring this to a close or anything. But God gave me that vision of the foundation. And one of the things that I saw was that the cross had to somehow be anchored. I kept getting that picture of when they took Jesus to the cross. That cross did not just sit on top of the ground. Physics would not have allowed that to happen. And I remember one time hearing about how when they nailed him to the cross, they laid it down on the ground, nailed it to it, raised it up, and dropped it in with a thud. I've heard how people sometimes say that because we are Christians and there's no need for the Old Testament, so we're going to look at what gives the cross its, its the cross uh, and Christ's death its power. So I want to put that argument to rest so that everybody will know That this foundation is the foundation for the skyscraper of our salvation that lasts for all eternity. The 39 books of this foundation is what is the basis for the 27 books of our redemption. You see, 
one of the things that I've learned, and I, I, I watched this, and, 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 and like I said, uh, there's somebody that can remember those days when Metro was doing that cut and cover in D.C. And how we had to detour over streets and all of that kind of stuff with those buses. That every foundation of a building must have a hole dug for the foundation. And the taller the building, the deeper the foundation. If the building foundation is not properly laid, then the building will not be structurally sound. Even, woo, even if the house has no basement, there still has to be footers poured for the house. Mm -hmm. You can't just build a house and scrape the dirt to level it. You got to have something there so that it will stand. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 if you want it to be structurally sound, now I believe uh, Jesus told a parable about two men building a house. One was a fool and one was a wise man. He said that the fool built his house upon a sand. Now, now I don't know if you've ever tried to walk on sand or run on sand, but sand sinks. Sand is loose. Sand gives away. It's not a good building material other than you mix it with cement. You can make concrete. You've got to use something else. You've got to dig down below sand. You've got to put some pilings or, or something like that in it. And if you notice when they build bridges, they put pilings down, they take floats out and they, they put pilings down where, they, where the, the, the stanchions for the bridge are going to be. And they put pilings down and they block off an area where the, 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 the stanchions for the bridge are going to be. And they drain the water and they put those pilings down into the water and, and they drain that section out and they push the pilings down until they hit bedrock. And then they pour in mortar and rebar and put uh, stone and everything in so that the bridge structure coming up out of the water will be sturdy so that the bridge strut stanchions will be sturdy enough to withhold the bridge going across the water. When they build buildings, they, they do the same thing. You see them building a building and they bring in pile drivers with beams and they, you can hear those things pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding those steel beams down into the ground until they hit bedrock. And then they pour mortar in and, and they space them out so that when they build the building on top of that, the building will be strong and will stand and will not sink because they expect it to last for a long time. Our salvation is based on a strong and firm foundation. When Jesus told Peter, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It was built on the bedrock of in the beginning God. You can't get any firmer than the beginning of God who is Alpha and Omega. 
His word says heaven and earth will pass away, but he will not fail. His word shall not fail. Let that sink in a minute. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. The early church preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. From the law, the writing, and the prophets. These 27 books of the New Testament had not been canonized. They were being lived out during the early church. They didn't have the advantage of what we have right now. When Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, he took his text from Joel. This is that which is prophesied by Joel. And 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. He didn't go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John did not exist at that time. They were, Matthew was still going about doing his thing, and Mark was still going about doing his thing. Luke was still writing for Theophilus, so Luke hadn't been written, and neither had Acts. Paul hadn't gotten saved yet. So when Peter preached, he was preaching from the book of Job. Oh, help me somebody. I feel my help coming on. The foundation was laid a long time ago. The foundation was laid even before God made the proclamation in Genesis when he told the devil in Genesis 3.15. The foundation was already in the plan. God knew what he was going to have to do when he conferred, when he made man and said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. He knew what he was going to do because since he is the beginning and the end, he knew the outcome at the end of the world. The foundation was laid more than 42 generations deep before the foundation of the world because before the foundation of the world, Jesus is. The cross was planted in a whole planet in the earth. You have my second video up there? And I don't know whether any of you all have seen uh, fence holes dug. It's just a simple hole in the ground. I can imagine when they got ready to put them crosses up on Golgotha's hill. Hey, Lord! Oh, I feel my help coming on now. It wasn't a hole like from so, for some great building. It wasn't a hole like for digging a subway tunnel. It was just a simple hole like they dug for some other executions, but this one was different. I don't know how deep the hole was for the cross that they hung Jesus on, but I know one thing, it was deep enough that when they nailed him to the cross and they raised it up and that thud went down and shook the ground. When it shook the ground, it cracked the roof of hell. And when it cracked the roof of hell, I can see this picture with the blood went streaming down. It shook the foundations of the earth. So when Jesus gave up the ghost, I could see the veil of the temple being rent. The foundation of the earth shook. It caused the weak foundation of hell to be broken. And when Jesus gave up the ghost, oh Lord, he went down into hell 
that's the keys out of Satan's hand that Adam and Eve had lost. And the third day, he rose from the grave and with the keys in his hand declared, all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. If the foundation had been laid a long time ago, then the building would not have stand, and it would not stand. Now the whole building stands and will stand forevermore. Jesus said, it shall not fail. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It shall stand forevermore. Foundation and building forevermore. Nothing shall come against it. I'm telling you, aren't you glad? It's integrity strong. It will stand the test of time. No hurricane, no pandemic, no tornado can cause it to waver. No bomb will cause it to shake. It will stand. It will stand my storms in my life. It will withstand my tears. It will stand when I go shouting down the shining way. My salvation will stand forever when I go shouting from glory <laughs> unto glory. It shall still stand. My foundation is sure. My salvation is sure forevermore. Yeah! That's my story. Yeah! Woo! And I'm sticking to it. Glory! Hallelujah. Oh, he dug a foundation for somebody that might not know him. And the building, you know, <laughs> oh, I just got this. Hey! Now that the building is built, you know, usually when they got buildings built, you wonder, I used to wonder when I drive by brand new buildings and see these great big skyscrapers and stuff, and I used to wonder, I said, wonder who's going to be in there? And you see these signs up saying, now leasing. And you wonder, who's going to be in there? And the next thing you know, you see lights on in the building. And you wonder, who? I wonder who's in there. I wonder who's in that building. And I wonder sometimes, well, who owns that building? Well, you see, I don't have to worry who owns this building. I know who owns this building. It belongs to the God of heaven and earth. And I'm so glad that I've got a place in the building. I'm so glad he paid my lease a long time ago when he ransomed my soul. And he'll do it for you. All you have to do and say, Lord, save me, a wretch undone. Because Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt Mm -hmm. be saved. Case closed. And he's got a place mm -hmm. ready for you. And the lease has already been paid. It was paid at Calvary. All you've got to do is sign your name and say, I receive it. And it's done. That's my story. And it can be yours too. And all you got to do is 
stick to it. Hey, hey, hey. thank you, Lord. Woo. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I hope and pray this message was a blessing to somebody today. Lord, you turned me every which way but loose with this. Lord, I pray that it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Lord, let somebody receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen.